Hi Matthew. Hi Jamie. How you are, mate? How you getting on? Yeah, I'm a bit hungover. You're a bit hungover. I'm, I'm a bit hungover. hungover as well. But we've had breakfast. Yeah, we've. Yeah, I mean it may be late in the evening, but we've, we've had breakfast. <laughs> we've had breakfast. We've eaten something. <laughs> we're we're going to talk about some amps today, aren't we? We are indeed. We have three wonderful examples of well. We have some solid state amplifiers here. <laughs> we have a trio of transistor amplifiers. Yeah, just to, to try and take some of your bias against solid state amps out of there and just show you how they can be perfect. Or in certain situations. Tolerable, maybe okay, sometimes. Or maybe you're about to hear how we hate all of them. Now they're all rubbish and you should just buy them. Stay tuned! <laughs> Amplifiers, Matthew. Yes, amplifiers. 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 The things that you plug into to make lots of noise when you don't want an acoustic. Exactly. In the right. video. <laughs> <laughs> we both own amplifiers. We do. And we both own valve amplifiers. We also both own solid state amplifiers. Yes, we do. Including. This, this one, one. This is one of them. We're going to talk about some solid state amplifiers today. Um, to preface this, we're talking about old school analog. <laughs> you all right there? Mm. Do you love it when the coffee's uh, done? I, I like it when the coffee's hot and brown. Yeah, hot and brown. Um, we're both. We're, we both have old school solid state analog amplifiers. We don't have digital modelling amps, so we're not talking about like. Boss Katanas or Fender Mustangs, even though they're the popular solid state amps at the moment. These are proper old school, they're kind of the same circuitry as valve amplifiers, they just have transistors instead, don't they? Yes, <coughs> and they usually get a bad reputation, and people are very, guitarists are a snobbish breed anyway. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people turn their noses up at things like encore guitars and cheap Marshall solid state amplifiers, which wasn't even that cheap by today's market. But, oh, was it? no, no, this was about 10 years ago, this was 250 pounds. Which today gets you a Boss Katana. Gets you a Boss Katana and the optional foot switch. The optional foot switch was an extra 40 pounds. So. God, it was, isn't it? <laughs> it's nearly 300 quid's worth of amplifier. Yeah, but you could all, if, if you went on a, it's, it's currently around Black Friday, if you went on a Black Friday sale, you could probably get yourself a Blues Junior. Yeah. For 300 quid. Ugh. I reckon, I reckon you could find a Blues Junior. How much are Blues Juniors nowadays? Uh, I have no idea. It's not the kind of thing you'll have ever bought, is it? No. Um, no. We'll, we'll put the price of a Blues Junior on, like, Anderton's <laughs> up here now, so you can see. Um, but yeah, so the, these, these do get a bad rap, but I actually quite like Solid State Amps. This is my own personal Marshall MG30FX that, I, as I said, I bought about 10 years ago. And it usually sits in my studio, and it's the first amp that I plug something into, simply because everything can be saved uh, in four channels. And yeah. you can have a clean channel, you can have a distorted channel, you can have a lead channel, all preset. You just have to plug in the guitar, turn it on, and play. Not only that, you don't have to play loudly, which my neighbours also appreciate. The nice thing about what, Matt, what Matt was referring to is that with a solid state amp, when you then turn it down... You can't hear anything. And then a little bit louder. It gets louder, but the tone doesn't change. If we did that with a valve amp, particularly my Fender, <laughs> every single time you turn the volume knob, the sound changes, your tone changes. It's with a solid state, that is their natural arena, that's how they work. <laughs> you turn the guitar up, it helps if you turn the volume up. 
Now, I think, personally, everyone, I'm sure everyone already does have something like this in uh, their bedroom when they start learning guitar. They are very, very useful amps to, to just have lying around when you want to play quietly, but not in headphones. Because playing in headphones is a completely different experience. It sucks, doesn't it? It does suck. Whereas that, that is perfect. Um, it's also, personally, an amp that kind of sets the level for what I expect a guitar to sound like. So I know if a guitar is good or if a guitar is bad because that is my default amp yeah. and everything is relative to it. So I know how to set it to see how the, the guitar is going to sound when I then plug it into the very noisy power amp. It's nice to have an amp that you've had for years and years and years which you know the way it sounds because you can reference guitars off of it, can't you? Exactly, yes. And uh, because this one has pre -se pre -se select pre select select save save pre presets save, save saved presets because this has say. saved presets is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I can set this to how I want. So if you can, you can probably just about see how that is set right there. None of that matters because everything is saved. So you can have some idiot come along and you can have a nice. Let's go for a, uh, let's go for a lead channel. You can have a nice kind of. A and then you can have some idiot come along and go, oh no, no, no we don't believe in mids, uh, no, no, we like some bass, uh, all the gain, you have to have gain on, on, on everything, uh, uh, no, you don't need mids, honestly, you need more treble uh, and pledge of reverb and just... <laughs> And then you just press the button, and you've undone their <laughs> tone. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, no, I don't think we can. I don't think we can. Hang on, we'll just over it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so every single time there's a swear word, I then have to edit that. I can do that. That's the thing that I can do. <laughs> what are the issues with solid state amps, Matt? Why do you um, think people don't like them? They feel different. It's quite a hard thing to explain. What do you mean by feel, Matt? The way that the tone reacts to how you play, the way you hit a note, and the way the amp physically translates that into a noise is different. It They're is a not very as touch sensitive. It is a very digital thing. It's like if you have a cheap keyboard and you've got touch turned off. You just press a button and it makes a noise. It's doing exactly what you want. Whereas if you play a piano or you put the touch, touch button on, then you know, it reacts to how you press the note. Uh, so this doesn't really have that. That's a bad thing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how you play. Sometimes I think that for like really heavy styles, like metal <sighs> for instance, where you're constantly just chugging away at it, actually having a really touch sensitive amp is kind of a hindrance. Yes, true. And, and, and a lot of metal players will dial in so much gain from a, an analog pedal on the floor that actually they negate a lot of though that from tone out from valve amps. I think they actually make their valve amps behave more like solid state amps by putting a digital pedal in front of it because that's essentially what you're doing, isn't it? Yeah, that that is a good point. Personally, it, whilst I do like valve amps, there's only a certain use for them in today's kind of gig playing world. Yeah. Really. Realistically, really, you don't need massive amps for a no. start. You don't need lots and lots and lots of valves in an amp. And if you don't have a lot of money to spend, you don't need a valve amp with its valve breaking every few months if you're gigging it hard. Yeah. So there is a definite place for a good quality solid state amp. And by the way, I'm not saying that that is <laughs> a good quality solid, solid state amp, but don't just immediately turn your nose up at something because it doesn't have a valve. We've done band rehearsals with that amp, and it was fine. Yeah, we have done. I once played a gig with it. Only Did once. You? Yeah, yeah, back in back what? in back in all day. What a family's mum gig. Yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, played a heavy metal gig with it. Just mic that up. It's fine. Just, well, yeah, it's all right. I was watching a CS Guitars video the other day, and if you don't know who CS Guitars is, I'll link to their channel. Um, and he was talking about little fifteen watt valve amps, and he was saying that actually way back when you needed bigger amps and they didn't exist because obviously all of the sound was coming from an amplifier at the back of the stage. Whereas now, even if you play in a pub, they will have a microphone, they will have a PA. Yeah. Like, you could take exactly. a tiny little 2-watt pig nose, get a tone you liked, 
mic it up, stick it through a PA, and you will compete with the drummer. Exactly. You don't need a big amp anymore. Yeah. You just don't. I mean, certainly with solid state amps over valve amps, you tend to have more versatility with them anyway. You tend to have a very good clean, a very good distortion, if possible. Obviously, this is a, a Marshall. A Marshall kind of covers all. They try and have a reasonable clean. If you want a brilliant clean, get a Fender. But they have a good clean, a good distortion, a pretty much a good everything. A jack of all trades, master of um, being easy to use. Yeah, this <laughs> is great. Any tone from this amp is available by just pressing a button, turning it on, having the volume up not too high, any guitar, nice and easy to use. If you are just practicing, if you just do an hour of practice, like you try to shred, you just want to do an hour of licks, an hour of exercises, you don't need to fire up a valve amplifier, turn everything on full. Yeah. You just need something like this just to plug into and play. If you practice rarely enough that your neighbours don't get pissed off with you turning on a valve yeah. amp every time you want to play, then you probably don't play guitar enough. Yeah. I couldn't, I, I practice daily, I play most days, even if for just 20 minutes. I couldn't turn my valve amp on every single day and have my neighbours not hate me. You need a bedroom amp, you need something where you can turn that volume down and still sound the way you want to sound. And again, this has a respectable clean tone. Yeah. That's a strat type guitar in its fourth position, so in its quacky position. It has a clean. That'll do. That is a perfectly respectable clean. You'll see when we get to my Fender amp, that has a slightly nicer, more sparkly clean. Now this is the Frontman, Fender Frontman 25R. So this is a 25 watt solid state amplifier, okay? And it sounds like this. I bought this second hand for about 50 quid about five years ago. It was probably about 10 years old when I bought it. Now, I don't know how much it ran for when it was new, but this amp isn't packed with the features that your amp is. So, the gain channel on it, as you'll hear in a moment, is kind of rancid. Hmm. It doesn't have a delay, it doesn't have a flange or a chorus, a phaser. Built-in tuner. Or a built-in tuner. The foot switch, which was an optional extra because I bought it second hand, there was no option to buy that, only gives you one option, which is to go between the two channels. Again... The only reason I ever use that gain channel is to get a slightly warmer clean sound. I never would use it for gain, it doesn't sound very good. The thing that Fender have done very well with this amp is that the one or two features they've given you are very good. So for instance, it has a lovely clean tone. This is Fender sparkly, clean tone, just Fender goodness isn't it? It's everything you want from a Fender amp. Also if you hear, can you hear that? This has got a reverb tank in it. For those of you who don't know, the old fashioned way of getting reverb is to have an actual tube, much like valves, and then you have a, a coil of wire inside that, and the signal passes through that, and that gives you the reverb. It's an actual analog reverb. Your amp has a digital reverb, and this has an analog reverb, and I really think you can tell the difference. I just think there's something lovely and organic about a Fender Tank Reverb. And so that is a real plus point for me because Reverb's the only effect I really use. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I tend to play guitar straight into a clean amp, a little bit of reverb, mids cranked so it sounds nice and spanky and that's my thing. This amp provides me with the one thing I need and that's a nice reverb. And I think it does that really well. It does. It has a, a very nice clean sound with a nice reverb on. This gain channel is a little bit 
<laughs> not very <laughs> nice. We've just spent maybe a few minutes dialing in this tone and this is as good as we can get. <laughs> just a bedroom player and you don't play dirty all the time and you just sometimes want to hear the guitar distort then it's fine but otherwise buy a pedal love me a bit of easy top <laughs> so the last amp is a roland micro cube this is an old micro cube and you openly revile this amp don't you it's better now that i fiddled with some of the knobs <laughs> <laughs> so i bought this amp about a year ago, I went and did some postgraduate studies, and I went from having a house <laughs> to having one bedroom in a share house in Leeds. And so I needed an amp. I, I looked at the size of the bedroom that I had, and I needed an amp that could sit on my desk. Didn't have room. I only just had room for one guitar, so I had to take one guitar, and it was just the newest one I had and my current favourite and this amp and it was all I had room for and this sat on my desk and still sits on my desk and it is a Roland product so it's pretty hardy it's pretty simple um there's some core tones in it that are all right mm. you're not gonna it's not gonna win any prizes I have in the house which is currently needs some repairs a pig nose which I wish that was working for this video because that sounds incredible is sound, they sound amazing and they're a tiny little amp. If you don't know what a pig nose is, look it up. This, it makes a noise. It doesn't sound great, it doesn't sound bad, it makes a noise, it is what it is. It's also only a tiny bit bigger than the headstock. It is. <laughs> you just measured the speaker across and I saw you put in your hand to your crotch. Yeah, it's, it's got to be at least three foot. The Roland Micro Cube, speaker smaller than your <laughs> So, how do you feel about this amp, man? It sounds like a very annoying neighbour. <laughs> uh, it's just something shouting a vaguely guitar tone in your ear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing that I like about this amp is that it has chorus, phaser, tremolo, delay and reverb. It can have an acoustic sound, a JC clean, which I'm assuming is a um, some kind of clean fender. I think. Maybe not a, a Marshall JCM. There you go. It's a Marshall JCM clean. That's kind of quite bright. Then you've got a black panel, which is obviously a black face fender. Um, so just like a fender valve amp. You've got a brick combo, which I assume is like a Vox AC30. And then you've got a stack classic, which I'm assuming is like a Marshall... Two watt stack. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a big Marshall stack. And then you've got a R fire, which I'm assuming is like a dual rectifier. And you've got mic as well. And you've got mic, which is meant to sound that make it sound so like. So you can do that. Yeah. It's meant to make it sound like an acoustic guitar mic'd up. So if you play for me, kind of does. That wasn't even a chord. But you could also set it to acoustic, which actually kind of. It's not offensive. I would have assumed the mic setting is there if you wanted to plug a microphone in. What, and use it as a tiny PA? What, into a quarter inch jack? Oh yeah, there's a, that's a good point, there is no other input. No, so there's no way you could plug a mic into it. Huh, you've even got a picture of a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Yeah, that one's never really made much sense to me. Now, this is a modelling amp, isn't it? This is one of Roland's early attempts at a modelling amplifier. It's the baby in the range. Um, actually, the Roland Cube, I think, is a pretty good amp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is certainly an anomaly. <sighs> yeah, the Roland Cube is kind of a predecessor to the Boss Katana, isn't it? It does look cool, though. <laughs> it does look quite cool. So I would argue that the clean tones on this amplifier are actually a lot nicer than the dirty tones. So here's some chordal playing. So I think it definitely lacks the richness and complexity of either of the others. But I think that's more to do with it having a teeny tiny speaker. The Marshall and the Fender both have a 10 inch speaker. This has, I think, an 8 inch speaker. which no, it's smaller than that. Is it? Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> Interlude while Matt looks it up. How big is the disc speaker? 5 inches, guys. 5 inches? That's small. <laughs> It's five inches when I was. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's a solid three. Let's do some tones. I'm going to play the same clean piece in both amplifiers. Matt's going to play the same dirty piece in both amplifiers so you can compare the way they sound. Obviously, we've got the guitar set differently for both pieces. I'm using the quacky in between the sound. He's using that bridge humbucker. But they're going to be set the same way for both pieces. So I'm using the same sound for both my pieces. He's using the same sound for both of his. How do you feel about our amps now that we've talked about them, compared them, played them all? Uh, I feel that that was a, a journey. Uh, at the end of the day, um, we all go home and uh, drive our fast cars. Uh, what did you ask me again? Um, <laughs> bye! <laughs> I hate the Roland Microcube. <laughs>